Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to FTB Interactions. So since last episode I have done just a little bit of building, um, my internet was actually out over the weekend, and so I didn't get as much done as I had hoped. But anyways, what we are going to be working on today, we're going to start down a little bit of a rabbit hole, a little bit of a project, um, working towards getting into some better power. Um, but to do that, we actually have a lot of things to do, uh, just to make our lives a bit easier uh, for that. So the very first thing that I want to do, I want to get into just a little bit of Thalmcraft to get us started. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to make a Focal Manipulator. And you'll notice in here I have crafted up a few things that we're going to be using uh, in the upcoming episodes. Some, maybe this episode, we'll see where we get to... Um, see how things go but all right let's go ahead let's get our focal manipulator so there's that and for right now I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it into this room that'll be fine and then we are also going to want to get a seal and I believe that there's a quest let's see for just a blank yeah blank lesser focus and there's a quest for the focal manipulator uh, we'll get that in just a moment so for this, we're going to need an Ordo V Crystal with 20 Vitreous, 10 Percantio, and 5 Aurum. So for the Vitreous, I'm just going to go with 10. Uh, that'll be fine. And let me get some more Warded Jars also. And we got our Vitreous. So there's 37 of that. And then, let's see, it was an Ordo Crystal. Okay. We're also going to need the 10 Percantio and the 5 Aurum. Um, Aurum, we don't have Shimmer Petals at the moment, but... Silver wood would work just as well. And I think I need to get a crystal tree planted and growing in our tree beacon, I think. But let me go ahead and toss that in. We're going to go with the blank lesser focus. And looks like it wants the arm first. Go ahead. There we go. There's Actually, I had some herba, but that's fine. Okay, so there's our arm. Then we're going to toss in our crystal chunks. There is our Percantio, and we're going to go ahead and feed in the Aurum that we need. So there's that. Then it wants the Percantio. We're going to make the system a little bit better uh, before too long, but there's that. Once we actually start needing it a bit. At the moment, we're really not using it that much, truth be told. Okay, so there is our Blank Lesser Focus, and we'll go ahead and get the Focal Manipulator again to finish out the quest. Alright, so what we're going to do, let's go ahead, let's put this into there, and we're going to make ourselves a spell. We're going to go with just a projectile spell, and this is just going to be, we'll just go with a fireball. We're just going to make just a basic fireball. Uh, it's going to cost 1.2 V per cast. We're going to need to get ourselves a Modus and Ignis V Crystal. Um, I'm not interested in increasing the burn duration or the power for this, I don't think. Well, we could bump it up just a little bit. 2V per cast. Yeah, actually, we'll go ahead and do a burn duration of 1 and a power of 5 on this. We are going to need 1 XP level, and then it was um, Modus and Ignis. Um, oh, it just so happens, I was getting my quartz liver, but it just so happens we do have a Modus crystal. So we're going to go ahead and grab that, and 1 Ignis crystal. And we'll go ahead and say start crafting. I don't know if the XP is bugged or what. There we go. I was clicking it and the one level, it wasn't accepting the one level. Um, I'm not really sure why. It looks like maybe that's not correct because it just took four from me. Um, but anyways, we're going to get our blank lesser focus with projectile and fire. We'll go ahead and snag that. And then let's go ahead and open our controls. Let's go down to, let's go ahead and set the caster focus to just subtract. And we're gonna go ahead and select the fire projectile spell that we made. So now we can do that and we can shoot a flaming projectile uh, that can set stuff on fire. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're gonna go out and kill some mobs. Usually this is really, really common spawn but what we're looking for is ectoplasm. But of course, now that I'm looking for it, I'm going to have a hard time finding any. Um, but ectoplasm, sometimes whenever you kill mobs, of course, small little blue things will come out of them. 
That is an ectoplasm. And by default, the only way to kill them is via some sort of magic source. Um, now, I remember our last time through interactions, we managed to kill it. And I can't remember how we were killing it, but we got ectoplasm without needing uh, any kind of a spell. Um, of course, you can use potions for it, but uh, having a good fire spell, not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, that does pretty decent damage. It does consume a little bit of aura from the chunk, but... You know, that's whatever. There we go. Oh, is it not gonna... Really? You? Okay, so apparently Thomcraft uh, damage does not count as... Oh. No. That was just its despawn. Okay. Back to the drawing board. I thought that was gonna work. I might just have to make a potion. Um, but I was wanting to make like a useful spell and I was like, oh, we're gonna make this and be able to knock that quest out, but all right Actually, let's go ahead and take the blank advance focus. Maybe it has something to do with the fire damage uh, That is a possibility. So we'll go ahead and drop that in And let's go with a different projectile. We just need to go with something a little bit different maybe so Yeah, let's go with a flux projectile so it's going to take Vidium and Modus. Of course, now I'm out of... Uh, I do have a vial of Vidium. So I'll take that and just a couple slivers. And we're going to pop down. We're going to select our Vidium. We'll go ahead and dump that into there. That's going to make us our Vidium Crystal. And then we'll get our Modus. Okay, so this... We're going to go with a full power of five. And we'll go ahead and say craft that and we'll give it just a minute to drain the V that it needs there we go and we got our blank advanced focus <clears throat> but let's go ahead let's pop out see if we can get ourselves another um, ectoplasm and if you want to see this spell in action we shoot just concentrated flux at enemies. Flux can actually be pretty powerful. I've used it in the past. Um, I think Enigmatica, the first go around, I used a flux spell, if I recall. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we got ourselves a piece of ectoplasm. And more fun, I think, than going with potions. All right, so let's head on back. And now what we're going to do, let me grab, um, well, let me grab a few of these caches. And let me get a, well, we got some out there. We're just gonna grab a sapling. And what we're going to do, we're gonna set this down like here. I guess. And we're going to take our ectoplasm. We're just going to right click that. And we're going to make ourselves a specter sapling. Now I think we popped a quest here. Yeah, spooky scary goo. Uh, we get a vial of spiritus essentia. Not too worried about that right now. And uh, if we grab this up, we will get some more ectoplasm from that quest. Uh, so that's good. And we're going to start moving into specter coils here soon, as you might imagine. But that's not what I want this for at the moment. What we're going to do... Um, actually, I think it takes a really long time just to grow, doesn't it? But I'm not noticing the bone mill effects. I don't think that uh, that's going to work on this. I think I'm just going to have to wait a while uh, for this to finally grow. So here's hoping that that spot is going to be good for it. Um, I will try some bone mill just to see if that works. But uh, I don't think that it does. I think we're just going to have to give it a little while. Yeah, bone mill's not going to work. I figured if shifting doesn't work, then bone meal's not going to work. So let's go ahead and get ourselves some living rock. And we're going to go ahead and get ourselves, uh, well, I want to get these. And then we're going to want, um, I'm going to see if I can do this without needing all the extra stuff that I don't really want. Um, but let's take a look at the mana input hatch. Uh, this right here, we're going to need an energy input hatch. 
Okay, so there's our energy in, and then there's our energy input hatch, and we are going to need two thalmium plates and aquamarine. And let me just grab like 64 sapphire, because I need, I need to get some more aquamarine built up anyways, and we're just going to throw this into the autoclave. We'll toss that in there. Get that running. That should send it just straight out to the output. And that's going to get sent on back, uh, which is fine. And let me just fix the recipe here. All right, so there is our mana input hatch. Spectre tree is still not grown. Um, and what we're going to be making is the mana extrapolator. Um, so for this, we're going to need... Um, we're also going to need the crystallized mineral. We'll get to that in just a second. But I believe the bottom is the machine controller. It's a 3x3. Three three. Yeah. Let's go ahead, actually, and just set it up. Let's put it here. Um, so machine controller goes there. And then we're going to have the living rock. We're probably going to need... Um, well, we won't necessarily need more of this, but... Um, as far as how to lay this out, see it tabs through like a lot of things. Let's go ahead, we're going to set the mana in on this side. We're going to do the fluid output on the other side. Like that, and then we're going to have the living rock brick there. And then on top of these goes the slabs. And then we're also going to need um, a block of crystallized mineral, and then we're going to need those specter wood. That's Spectre Wood. So the crystallized mineral, what will be the best way to, ah, okay, just nine crystallized mineral check chunks in a compressor will be fine. Or do we want to back this up, up against that? No, I think leaving the space between it's good. We're going to be doing a bit with mineral before too long as well, but not right this second. All right, so there's our block of crystallized mineral. And now we're really just waiting see if it's going to accept it like this. So I need the Spectre Wood to find out. Um, as far as our Batania stuff, I'm going to move that out here at this point, our Petro Petunia and all. Um, and to do that, let's go ahead, unless it's too expensive, which I doubt it's going to be, Mana Tablet, okay. Mana Diamond, just a flawless, great. All right, let me get... Um, toss all that in there. Let me get uh, eight pieces of our concrete and then let me get a uh, exquisite diamond. We're going to be automating the pure daisy probably before too long as well. I'd like to. Oh, it's a flawless diamond, not an exquisite diamond. My bad. And we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a mana tablet. And what we're going to do, just so that we don't waste any mana, we're going to go ahead and say that all of these are going to feed into our tablet. And we're going to toss that in and let that start filling up the tablet and emptying out the mana pools. And we're going to set up this little mana system out here. So what we'll do is we'll have, um, which really I don't even know if it's necessary that we really have. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and do the mana pool. So we're going to set this up like right in there. We'll have our mana splitter setting there. Our... Mana Spreader. We'll go ahead and just send that down. And then right below that is going to be our Petro Petunia. And then right down here, we'll put in our pressurized fluid tank. And then we'll put this on there. All right, so I need to make another Mana Spreader for starters. And let me go ahead and just dump this in and let that start emptying out its mana now into that pool. And uh, let me get another spreader made. And that's just going to fade straight into the input hatch. And we're still waiting on the Spectre Wood. And this is just going to be, this, this mana system long term is just going to be for basically feeding this. Um, we're going to be doing something a little bit different for the majority of our system, I think. And what we're going to do, we're just going to tap into the creosote line that sits right there. And we just connect that over, that, and we'll say that you can insert. Because uh, we have a lot of creosote being made to the point that it's backing up. 
So we're just going to tap into this. Long term, we're not probably going to be using creosote for this. Uh, but for right now, that'll be fine. And we're still waiting on the spectra tree. So I'm going to give this a while. I seem to remember it taking like a few hours uh, to grow. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to give this just a little bit and then we'll come back once we have that and we'll be able to finish setting up our mana extrapolator and start using this. So I will be back in just a little bit. Okay, it's the next day. Um, I checked it uh, like an hour later and it was still it was still running so I was like well I'll just wait um, I went ahead and set up three caches this has started growing and kicking out some resources we have 888 spectre wood 63 spectre saplings and 63 ectoplasm so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab us out eight uh, spectre wood and let me go ahead for right now until we see to make sure that this thing runs and everything uh, let's go ahead and get access to our machine controller and what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and put in our specter wood there 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 and it may want because what I want is a uh, mana input fluid output but it seems like if I do that I'm gonna have to have the fluid input and the mana output as well um, it's seeming like so what we'll do we'll go ahead and just break that off and we'll break that off and then I have to make the mana output we're not really going to be using this but um, okay let me go get that okay so there's our mana input hatch and we'll just change that over to an output there we go and then we need the fluid input so we'll set this up, mana output over on this side, fluid input over on this side. Still does not detect the structure. Okay, maybe this one needs the paper in it. That's derping. It's so easy with multi-blocks to miss a piece, I swear. All right, so if we put that there, put that there, and now, well, that's, that's the thing. Um, these are backwards. Now it sees it. Okay. Um, now question. Now that we've got it working. Um, we don't really need the fluid in. And we don't need the mana out it does still see this as a multi-block um, but its progress is uh, <laughs> it's doing something I don't know I don't know what it's doing but it's it's it seems to believe that it's doing something alright so in that case if we put the mana spreader down we'll put it on this side and we'll bind that over like so. Now it's getting mana. Let's see. But it's not. Okay. It is going to need the, the stuff on this side, I think. It wasn't acting all buggy when it wasn't put on here, so I'm just going to put it back. Yeah, there we go. Now we're producing mana. Awesome. So we'll start turning that Batania mana, mana into the wizardry mana here. So that's working. I'm going to go ahead and just replace our dirt now because I don't need that anymore. All right, so we're producing mana. Now, the next thing I want to do, yeah, if we send this over by logistics pipes, that'll be fine. And I do want to start sending mana over to the ore processing area as well, since we do have this set up. Let me order us another portable tank. And we do have uh, this Enderium upgrade, or this Resonant Conversion Kit. I'm going to go ahead and use our Resonant Conversion Kit for our mana storage, I think. Um, I may actually have a tank. Actually, I do have a tank of mana. Uh, this one, yeah. Let me go ahead and snag that, and we'll just use this tank um, for our mana storage. So what we'll do, I wish I could pipe from there. Um, I guess we're just going to put it setting, I don't know, I guess I'm going to put it here. And we're going to go ahead and just upgrade that to resonance. So it can store 500,000 millibuckets. 
and uh, actually let's go ahead and just enchant this also while we're at it we're gonna have super mana storage um, I did end up moving our enchanting system I've been working a little bit up here and I have an idea for this area this actually overhangs over the front but I have an idea of course this isn't really a build series but there is I do want to do some levels of building so we have two million two hundred fifty thousand millibucket storage on that portable tank sounds great to me we actually got a kind of a bad enchant and since speed isn't that important we're gonna go ahead and just put that on so you can extract and yeah you can insert so it's gonna start pumping our mana up into this portable tank all right so what we'll do we'll go ahead and just put our fluid provider pipe in there so that we can provide from that location and we'll just bring this up okay so mana can be fed from our system now and the next thing that I want to do um, let's go ahead now that we've got that let's grab our fluid placer our fluid collector and that should be good for right now I also want to um, let me grab this module or actually let me grab a crafting pipe and table real quick and we're gonna go ahead and set up a recipe and just crafting and we're gonna go ahead and set up a recipe for gold nuggets so that's the recipe it's as simple as that and then we'll go ahead and just import that so if you take gold ingots you can make gold nuggets and then what we're going to do Time to set up our fluid collector and placer. I also need the timer dropper comparator. And then let me go ahead and also get another, well, the tank that we ordered uh, earlier. And I'm gonna go ahead and enchant this tank also. Not everything is enchanted, like the caches at our tree farm aren't enchanted, but most things I try to enchant before I place down. So I don't have to worry about them later on. And then what we're going to do, let's, pop right here that's a basic yeah it'd be perfect actually so I won't need that basic um, let's go ahead I oh, will just bring it straight up for right now and we'll do a basic setting here and then we'll bring this over well let's go ahead and set up our fluid placer and collector now these rooms won't be the exact same size they'll be a little bit different um, and the overall layout will be a little bit different. I still have the central room here, but this the layout's gonna be a little bit different than the downstairs. So um, we're gonna have the collector setting here. And then we'll have, um, we'll bring this over like that. And then right here, we're gonna have a fluid provider pipe. I mean, fluid supplier pipe, not provider pipe. It sits right there, and we're going to have our placer sitting over on this side. So now, um, let's go ahead and just put down this slab here. This will be basically where the fluid is going to go. And in front of this, uh, let me grab a piece of glass. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to use thickened glass for this, I think. We're going to have our thickened glass sitting there. That way we can see inside of it. And see it running and then we're just gonna put crag rock back there go ahead and pull this up and right above this there we go I want it to face downwards so there we go now it's all in place basically just an iron dropper fluid collector fluid placer uh, redstone mode is deactivation we're gonna leave that this is gonna be running non-stop we're gonna go ahead and tell this keep uh, keep 6,000 and we're gonna do mana there we go here comes the mana and it's gonna get placed down um, now we're, oh right now let me uh, let me actually just deactivate this for just a moment here well let's actually uh, the easiest way I think to do this right now is just rotate this for just a moment um, and then we'll turn this back on I think uh, I think that'll be the easiest way for us to do this so we're going to go ahead and say mana keep 6,000 and that's going to start sending it over and uh, then let's also say well partial no minimum one bucket yeah that'd be good um, and then this we're going to go ahead and say I want you to do a eject when pulsed 
exact velocity that's all good and we're back here we're gonna put attach this we're gonna put a actually we'll put it right here we're gonna put an active supplier module that feeds uh, gold nuggets and we're gonna say whoops we are going to say do keep like two stacks and we're gonna say partial and that should be good for us and then what we'll do is we'll just bring this over I'll just plug it in over here and that way I don't have to do another basic so we'll just run it around like that and here in a second we should see some gold nuggets coming in I'll go ahead and throw one of these in there there went some yeah there was a few and it's probably sent a request to craft more because I think that's about what I had in the storage yeah here we go and we got two stacks it only requested 127 but I had the extra that I went ahead and tossed in there alright and that's basically I'm stocking two stacks we probably would be just fine with one but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stock two because that way we have a little bit more of a buffer and then what we're going to do is let's go ahead and set up a timer and we're gonna have this timer set to let's go ahead and do a 40 second delay pause while redstone active that'll be good and then I'm gonna set up our portable tank um, so what I'll do in that case I'll just put the NACRA tank here and then we'll have the comparator run out there um, which it is emitting a redstone right now and that's of course because there is NACRA in this of course it does have one bucket um, so we'll just bring that out and over I think this will work alright anyways for us so we're inputting on the white line and if we take a look now the timer is not running down at all um, so at this point what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and place down our redstone like so we'll go ahead and plug back up our black channel um, oh, sorry output on the black channel then what we're going to do is uh, what does it take to make a potential meter in this pipe? Comparator and lever, I love it. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna make ourselves a potential meter. Um, I also want to handle moving the stuff, so we've got our output routing node. Let me get a input routing node, and then I also need to get a master routing node. And oh, and I also need to plug up. Um, this tank is going to need, of course, our fluid supplier, or provider, I mean. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up a provider there. And then we're going to have our output routing node, and our output routing node is going to be attached. Uh, we'll put it here, um, so that way it'll be kind of visible for us. And we'll be able to see like kind of this whole setup, because we'll be standing um, one block above, so we'll be standing right here and be able to look into the uh, of course we'll see I may end up moving that pipe just so we can put a block there on the floor but we'll see so output routing node sitting there and then let me get my nodes together okay so what we're gonna do this is the west side um, so we're gonna say that the west side fluid filter and we're going to say that you'll accept NACRA, which um, let me let me go ahead and rotate that for just a moment, so I can safely grab out that and add that to the west side filter. The input routing node is going to set here. It doesn't look like we dropped, uh, no, we didn't drop extra gold. Great. So 10 seconds seems to be fine. It seems to give it a few seconds uh, leeway, just in case. Um, but this, we're going to say that on the east side, you'll have a fluid filter and it's going to be NACRA as well. And then we can go ahead and toss that back in and replace our redstone. And before we turn this to collect, um, let's go ahead and the NACRA here, let's say 1,000. 
then we'll turn that back. Okay, so we've got we got two thousand millibuckets of nacre at the moment. That's fine. Um, then our master routing node that just handles this system, we're just going to have it setting here. Um, I don't want that to connect. Definitely not. And then we'll just go ahead and connect that to that, that, to that. Okay. So it's going to leave a bucket of NACRA. In the past, I've done like one millibucket, but I tend to use NACRA, right, in like full buckets. So I might as well just leave a thousand in here all the time. Um, and that way it filters it and basically says all you can pick up is NACRA. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to add a potentiometer and this is going to set. We're going to have our potentiometer setting here. And this is going to be set to a, uh, let's do a 12. And this is going to be on the black line. Uh, so we're going to say input black. Okay. So, uh, Okay, now actually just setting this to a strong signal fixed it. Um, I just ran the conduit back over, strong signaled it, and it's not interfering with our fluid collector. So never mind. Crisis averted. Um, so the NACRA is starting to fill up on us. Now, right now, I don't think we're going to have the mana. Gold's not an issue, right? We automated gold a couple episodes, or last episode. So we don't really have to worry about the gold part. Uh, the mana could be an issue starting out. Okay, I went ahead and fixed the piping back here so that we don't see it. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. Um, I was wanting the block back there just so we didn't have something visible. But I think, I think with the way it's set up, yeah, we're still going to be able to see it. But I think I'd rather do a sensor coming out of the back. I think so. So what we're going to do... And that way we don't have to do the collection system. And it's just going to work better. This is stopped... At the moment, you can see it stopped at 71 buckets. We'll put the sensor setting there. We'll rotate it, and we'll just move the master node uh, somewhere else. So, uh, the master node can sit right here. That's fine. And we'll just relink that up. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have the sensor read, and it's going to check for a fluid. We're going to be looking for mana. Um, so we're going to say check for mana uh, in the us. If it detects mana, you can see it's going to emit a redstone signal out of here. But I think I'm just going to go back to kind of revisit our system from the last go around uh, using the sequencer. And we're going to be using a logic gate as well for this. Um, it's going to be, I think, a little bit more spiffy than our last go around. But uh, we're going to pull up our timer and we're going to put down our sequencer setting here. And this sequencer, we're going to have an output on the orange line. We're going to change it up a little bit. So white line is reading the comparator. Um, so basically black says, you know, tells the comparator what to read off of. That's just our potentiometer. Uh, orange is going to feed into the sequencer. White is going to be coming out of the comparator. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up a logic gate that sets here. And we're going to have this, uh, no. We're going to have the output off in this direction. And what we're going to do, well, let's set up this first, and then we'll set up the orange line. But this is going to be set up on the orange line. And then we're going to have a conduit that comes in here. And this is going to be from the white line. So we're going to say that you output on white. There we go. And what we're going to do, we want it to check two things. We want it to check, is the comparator, is there a signal coming from the comparator, and is there a signal coming from the sensor? So we're basically going to be ignoring this side over here, which will be the uh, the C side. Remember that this is, uh, we'll be looking at it like this. So the C side, we don't care about. It's never going to have a signal. So anything with a signal, we can just ignore. Um, but if there's no signal on any side, we want it to be off. If there's a, not a signal from A at all, we want that to be off because it needs to have mana for it to send a signal. Now, if there's a signal from A and no signal from B, remember B is the comparator, then that's good. We're going to say uh, on. Emit a redstone signal when there is a signal from A and not one from B. 
and then um, and then if there's two signals here we're gonna say off because that means the comparator is on and it's basically that simple we're just gonna set that one to on and then we'll pop up that's pretty much done so let's set up our sequencer and then we'll turn all this back on um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say when a redstone signal is received loop the cycle once and restart if a new pulse arrives okay and all we're gonna do is we're gonna just enable there I'm gonna see if that's enough signal to activate the iron dropper um, that will be the only the only thing is I don't know if it's gonna be a strong enough signal to activate the iron dropper let's see loop three loop the cycle when redstone signal is present continue at current uh, now restart on no signal yeah loop the cycle when redstone signal is present restart on no signal that should be good we've got 86 buckets we're gonna go ahead and turn this up to a full 15 I want to see how this does if this is long enough no it's dropping a second one so what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the delay to a 2 okay so we've got 89 buckets let me see now set this back up to 15 it's gonna drop the gold delay of two should be enough and it's gonna make one extra bucket because it doesn't detect uh, the knacker going into that tank yeah it seems like two is just right so that's good we'll go back to that system it's just gonna work better for us um, instead of having to do a collection system I was thinking well I'll do a collection system to pick up gold but I think I'd rather just do this I was trying to do something a little bit different than the last go around but this is a little bit different I think than our last time and it's just gonna work better than doing than having to set up a system to collect the gold nuggets because it ran over or ran out of mana or something like that so so basically it checks does it have mana is there space for the you know that we need it and if so if there's mana and if you know the comparator is not active so there is space within this then it sends a redstone signal to the sequencer activates it um, the reason I have it set to loop 4 is so that if something happens and it does run out of gold nuggets for a second it's gonna loop back around and get it um, but it shouldn't run out of gold nuggets since we do have gold automated at this point but uh, just in case something were to happen that way we can you know make sure that it doesn't get stuck so so yeah so now we've got NACRA automated and uh, it's a it's a big old pile of automation but it all fits into basically a what a three by four well four but I push the tank forward you don't have to do that but basically it could fit into a uh, three by four space um, not too bad not too bad so anyways and that's with all of our logic pipes and stuff I think without that you could probably fit it all into a three by three pretty easily well anyways anyways I know it's about wrapping up points so we are gonna end out this episode here uh, we got basically wizardry automated this episode which is kind of nice and next episode we are going to be using a bit of that as we begin pushing or continue pushing uh, towards power we're basically trying to get to HV to where we can start really automating a lot of things of course to do that I don't want to do steam for HV so we're pushing on to a new power source so there's a few steps involved to get up to that point so fun times but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the episode if you did as always be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out and I hope to see you guys next time so until then as always do take care stay safe I'll see you guys then